What's up guys, Don here, and today's tutorial is the 3 method on how to animate, not just in Pivot. I wanna say and recommend again Jujish's tutorial on spacing and timing because I believe I don't need to repeat it myself and if you do want me to make a tutorial on that, just comment it down because I'm not really sure or if you're lazy to look up other resources or whatever. His tutorial is really informative and it's straight to the point, he was able to pack all the information that are important about timing and spacing in just 4 minutes so it's really short and I still recommend it to who's just beginning you know animation in Pivot. And before I dive into the tutorial I just want to point out some few things, clarify some stuff. If you can put some subtitles on this video such as Spanish or Portuguese, please do so if you have the time. It would really help me out and this channel. Quick disclaimer, as flattering as it may be from your compliments, I get that it is a compliment, but I know that I'm not the best out there, and I don't claim to be the best. I didn't went to any animation school, I learned as I go back then because I didn't have any internet, and I'm still learning as if today. And also, I learned all this stuff from different source materials that are free in the internet, so you can pretty much just look them up yourself. And also, if I said something wrong in this video or off, you can correct me in the comment section, I don't really mind. Now the first method on how to animate is straight ahead. Straight ahead is animating, well, straight ahead. You go frame by frame and animate without planning in Pivot. Most animators, especially the beginners, go by this method. And it's really difficult because you have to completely understand the mechanics and the basics of this movement that you're trying to make. Because if you don't, you will miss out some important parts such as poses of the movement if you don't keep them in mind while doing the straight ahead. But if you can pull it off, the animation will come out with fluidity and smoothness. That is if you can remain consistent with your foreshortening and all that. But you don't have to bother with that in Pivot because you're just moving and puppeteering a stick figure. And this method is more used on effects such as fire or explosions and all that, you know, and also the background movement such as panning. Second one is pose to pose. Pose to pose is very time consuming, but it does pay off very well in the end if you're able to pull it off. It takes a lot of time on planning out and analyzing a certain movement and cutting it into different parts called key poses then going with extremes and breaking it down, then lastly putting the in-betweens, those poses. What's good about this method is that you can convey movements with clarity, with a step-by-step -step kind of feeling. But then if you can't pull off the spacing and the timing of your movement, the animation might end up getting snappy or janky or shaky in some parts. This can be good or bad, in some cases, snappy or janky or you know, shaky doesn't always mean bad. It can also be your style if you're really lazy because style means laziness, of course, and it depends on the animation that you're doing. This method is also extremely useful for animating several characters or a lot of things happening at once. So it does help out because you have to planify when or how things happen around. So yeah. And here are the pros and cons of the two methods that I've just talked about. Tweening is a different entire thing. It's not an animation method and it's not completely tied to pose to pose or you shouldn't be using it that way. People get this mix since stick nodes have this feature. Tweening is when the computer generates the frames or does the in-betweens for your poses. This is frequently used in 3D animation, but even then, the animators will still have to do some corrections on how fast or slow or how off the movement or the poses are in those in-betweens. So yeah, animators still have jobs. Tweening is really useful if you can control the timing and spacing between these poses. If you can't, then you're just making an animation with a constant speed without easing in and easing out, if I have to say it more simpler, without decelerating and accelerating. And it feels like robotic or it's just kind of off, you know. 
if you will rely on twinning, then you won't be able to understand or get the feel of making movement, rather you're just putting your keyframes, most beginner does that, then put twinning on, and by then they'll add extremes after that, etc. And eventually they're probably gonna lose track of what's going on with their animation. This is not exclusive with stick nodes because they have twinning, this is also one of the flaws between these two programs, which is pivot and stick nodes, because everything are moving in the same time, or in just one frame. They don't have different layers and or background. And if you want something else to move with a different timing, you have to keep in mind the spacing and the timing of one object that you're animating that is different from the rest. And it's really difficult to keep that in mind and it takes a lot of time and practice to pull it off. And there's a lot of way to tackle or face this problem in Pivot such as just animating the movements first and then adding the effects later which is clearly what all the other people are doing right now and then later what we used to call or what we like to call me and Omega is layering. You just open a different uh, PIV file for example animate your backgrounds there and then open another PIV file and then animate your movement. This actually goes well with Dragon Ball Z because characters can fly around and all that stuff and then after that you select all the stick figures in your first frame and then copy it and then paste it on the background animation that you did after that you're gonna do that for each frames that you animated from your movement stuff now with other programs you can just literally open another layer and just animate in that layer with a different spacing and timing and then organize or arrange stuff in their respective places which is pretty much less time consuming than pivot now me personally in my opinion i would use tweening more on the backgrounds or stuff that are moving in a certain way but doesn't attract that much attention because they're just objects that moves that way because they're in the background obviously. Now the last method on how to animate is the mix between pose to pose and straight ahead. I have no other explanation because it's really what it is. Since you can just go back and correct your error, you can take this as you did a straight ahead at first and then go back and try to put some poses which is pose to pose or the vice versa, you made some pose to pose animation and then clearly you missed something or you want to add something after that, then that's pose to pose then straight ahead. And at this point, you've done some correction and all that, you've probably noticed that this is how it works when you're given a CNC because you have to go back and correct some mistakes such as spacing and timing and all that stuff. Now I can spend more time explaining and showing more methods in Pivot but I'm not gonna do that, that can be a separate video by itself. Now before I end the video I wanna say that making this tutorial videos does take a lot of time and I do love making them but if you want me to keep making them I wanna plug in my Patreon. I will make them once we get that goal I set and I hope you understand that as much as I want to keep my presence in the Pivot community, I'm also trying new stuff with Flash. And I just want to point out that Pivot being compared to an animation industry, it's really just a learning tool and not a program to rely on when you're making big projects. If you do have the patience to do so, then that's your choice. No one will judge you for choosing such a simple program to make big wonders and go beyond its capabilities. It's actually inspiring in my opinion. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Hi and welcome to the end card. I just want to say thank you to all my Patreons this month. Uh, Dudus, Irlian Animator, Kristen Harrison, uh, Lord XD, Mattis, Michelle Garcia, and Weirdo. Thank you so much and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.